Sorry. Before we jump into our, our message time today, we always know that the guys at Riverbend and Deberry, the Tennessee prison for women, they're part of our church family every week. We like to greet them. They're on the other side of that camera. Come on, church family. Let's welcome them. We love y'all. Glad you're along for the ride today. And it's a good one, everybody. I hope that you go away encouraged and challenged today. We are in week one of a brand new series we are calling Breakthrough. And uh, it's great that you've chosen to be with us coming out of the Easter season. A question for us this morning. Have you ever experienced a time in your life where you felt like you just hit a wall? Like... There was something, whether it was known or unknown, there was something limiting you from getting to the next level. Like, like almost like you hit a lid and, and you're thinking to yourself, why can't I move forward? Why can't I get past this? And maybe you're cruising along in life, in your relationships, in your marriage, in your career, in your relationship with God, you're cruising along and then all of a sudden it feels like you hit a wall. Can any, am I by myself this morning? Is anybody else related to that? Okay. And you're wondering, how do I break through this invisible wall? Um, I think we all understand that, that growth in any area of our lives is going to at some point reach a threshold. Uh, you're going to reach a point in every area of your life where you have to decide whether or not you're going to break through the threshold to experience what awaits you on the other side. Now, breakthrough sounds amazing. <laughs> sounds enticing. Sounds encouraging. Sounds desirable until it gets painful. And then it's a matter of whether or not we're going to make the choice to embrace the pain required to break through. So you, you want to break through in your finances? At some point, you're going to reach a threshold. What's the threshold? Well, you have a salary. <laughs> it's not unlimited. A and you have a budget. So you should have a budget. I mean, <laughs> help us, Jesus. You have, you have a threshold. You, you've got limitation. And, and the choice you have to make, I, I want to break through my finances. I want to get debt free. Choice you got to make threshold of pain. Are you willing to embrace the pain required to get to the other side of what the threshold requires? You want to you break through in your physical body. Some point, you're going to reach a threshold. What's the threshold? To say no to the fatty cake and say yes to the pain that's going to be required to break through the threshold. Okay, let me just tell you something. If you want to break through in your spiritual life, the same principle applies. As Ashley's already reminded us this morning, we all want the breakthrough. We just don't want to embrace the pain that you have to go through to get over the threshold to get to the freedom. And today, today's going to frame for us the next few weeks. And all of those that aren't here today, they'll have to go back and watch this because we literally are building on this uh, every week. And um, you have uh, a message uh, note sheet in, in your worship guide today. And um, if, you, if you like taking notes, we always say the note takers are world changers. And I think, I think we have one world changer in the house today. That's great. Um, <laughs> but uh, two. Okay, great. We're, can, do I hear three, everybody? Okay. Uh, all right, good. Um, but you've got a, you got a diagram there. We're going to kind of flesh that out uh, a little bit. I'm going to do a little bit of drawings on the board uh, today. So um, I, I want you to envision yourself on a continuum. So let's let's start with let's start with that that thought. Let's see if I can draw some straight lines this morning. Uh, straight enough. I'm going to do them halfway. Okay. How, is that straight enough for everybody? Okay, I want you to envision yourself on this line. Now, let me say this. Whether or not you envision yourself on this line, you are on this line. Okay, so um, at this end of, of the continuum is this. We, we, we are moving in, in life to become more like Christ. You're on this continuum of life. 
And just like every other area of your life, if you want to break through a threshold, you're, you're going to have to make the choice to embrace the pain to become what we all want to become, hopefully, and that's more like Christ. And of course, at the other end, if you're heading the, the other direction, you, you're now becoming less like Christ. It's a very complicated continuum that I have here for you this morning. I know it's, I know it's difficult, but stick with me for just a second. We're becoming either more like Christ and you're, you're, I want you to see yourself on this continuum because whether you want to see yourself on this continuum or not, you're, you're on this, you're on this continuum. You're, you're moving one of two directions and all of us are at different points on this continuum. Now, what I love about our church is that we can celebrate that all of us are at different points on that line. <laughs> and what we need to worry about is where I'm at on the line, not where you're at on the line. Okay, that'll, just, that'll help say la on that, okay, everybody? And every single one of us, every day, are making choices that are either moving us to be more like Christ or moving us to be less like Christ. Are you following me so far? Okay. Now, this is what we know we want. Here, here's what I know. We want that. We want to be more like Christ. Why? Because this is moving me towards my purpose. This is moving me towards my God-ordained destiny. Why do we want, why do we want to be heading this way? Because this means I'm, I'm being led by the Spirit. Now, we, we know we want this. That's what I know I want. Here's what else I, I know. I also know if I want that, I also know what? That I don't want this. I don't want that because I want to be moving that direction on the spiritual continuum of, of my life. Why, why don't I want this? Because this isn't moving me towards my purpose. This is li Here I'm living in my past. And God's calling me to something more, which is ahead of me. And if I'm, and if I'm moving towards my past, I'm not being spirit-led, but I'm being led by what the Bible calls the flesh. I know I want this, but I often find myself doing the thing that I don't want. At the other end of the spectrum of what we know we want is where we often find ourselves. And for every single one of us, moving along this continuum, for every single one of us, there are moments when we feel like we hit a wall. And this is why, why we're building upon this today. And I'm hoping that this makes as much sense to you as the Holy Spirit has been revealing to me in my own process. As I come to what I'm going to call Come on, everybody. I'm writing sideways. I get more credit than that. Okay. A threshold of pain. Is, is, that, is that all right, everybody? Okay. Um, you can draw. It's on, it's on your sheet in, in Mr. Rogers fashion. Come on, draw with me today. Uh, we all, at some point in our lives are going to hit the threshold of pain. In other words, you're going to have to break through some resistances in the spirit realm and strive and have some discipline to become what you know you really want to be more like Christ. And there are moments when we're cruising along and then wham, I've hit a wall and there's this invisible resistance that I can't see with my natural eyes that I need to open up my spiritual eyes to see. I have found a threshold that I have to be willing to cross over. What's that going to require? Me embracing pain. And, and you know, when we study the Bible, here's what we discover. Every single person that God used in a great way who lived out their destiny and fulfilled their God-given purpose, every single one of them faced the threshold of pain, including Jesus himself. So thresholds of pain he faced during his ministry time here on earth. 
He had to break through some spiritual resistances to fulfill the purpose that his father had for him. He's in the desert, fasting, praying, seeking the father. What happens? Threshold of pain. The enemy shows up and tempts him. And he has to be, here's the question that Jesus had to answer. Am I willing to embrace the pain to get me to my purpose? How about about this one? He's in the garden. The night before he goes to the cross, praying alone because the disciples couldn't press through the pain. That was a joke, everybody. Okay, thank you. And, And he actually even makes a statement. He says to his father, I know what you're calling me to do. I know what my purpose is. I know why I'm here on this earth. I know what my my purpose is supposed to be and I wanna be led by the spirit, but I find myself at the threshold of pain and he actually is honest enough to say, is there any other way? Has anyone ever asked that question when you got to this place? Could, Could you use someone else, God? I'm sure there's someone else that's just as capable as I am. Could you? Is there any other way? And of course, in his time of prayer, he says, actually, nevertheless, not not what I want. (laughs) I want to do what you want me to do. I want to move closer to knowing you in a real way. Here's the problem, though. We think life moves in a linear fashion. We think life is X, Y, Z formula gets me this. We think this plus this will equal this. And can I just be the bearer of bad news? Life is not an equation. Yeah, you know, we, in fact, th- this is even how life works. You know how life works. Life is like, what the world? Is- oh, dear Jesus, well, help me out. I, I want to get here. That, that's life. And we have to get okay with the fact that life is not a formula. It's not an equation. Life has highs and lows and ups and downs, which begs the question, Devin, how do I know then when I have come up against a threshold of pain? Well, you need to start looking at your life and recognizing what's driving your life. So anytime I come up against a threshold of pain, what is in me will manifest outwardly which means I need to know what's driving my life when I get to this point. What's in me will determine my ability to either embrace the pain or back out of the pain. So let me, let me, just, let me just give you a few. Here's some things that you need to be measuring in your own life. It, it, could, it could be pride. What, what's pride say? Well, it's gonna be my way or no way. Well, I mean, if you'd hurried up and get on the right time schedule, God, you'd get with me, right? Maybe it's fear. If, if fear is what's driving you, here's how it would get externalized. You want control. You need to start looking at your life. And if, if when you come to the threshold of pain, you face resistance and, and you have the thought, I'm gonna back out of this. If fear is driving you, control is how it gets externalized. And when you don't get control and fear is motivating you, you say, I'm not gonna embrace the pain. Here's, here, here's a, I know I'm not talking to anybody this morning, so I'll just, I'll just keep. Insecurity. You come to a threshold of pain you know God's calling you to something else. How do I know if insecurity is driving me? Here, here, here's how it ex- gets externalized. Comparison. You're easily threatened. Uh, you think you're the exception. You're easily offended. All right, here's, here's another uh, uh, pain. And, and maybe I could even so, go so far as to say um, unresolved pain. You, you, get, you come to a threshold and you know, you know what you want and you know your purpose is on the other side of it and you know God's calling you to it. And then when you get to the point of stepping over the threshold, the thing that prohibits you from stepping over are all your unresolved hurts and pains that you've never dealt with. Pain from the past that you've never dealt with will keep you from moving through your purpose and keep you from stepping over the threshold in your life. And unless and until you deal with it, that's why I'm so proud of all of you that went through freedom, all you freedom group people in the house. I'm so proud of you. What, what'd you do? What'd you do? I made the choice to no longer live in the pain of my past. And unless you deal with it, you can never expect 
expect to break through to what God's calling you to. Let me get a, maybe this is just a little bit more, more practical for some people. Anger. I mean, I mean, I know I'm the only one that gets upset, but if you find yourself consistently snapping, if you find yourself consistency, consistently blowing up on your kids, if one little thing sets you off and you flip your lid, if that's happening in your life, it could be that you've reached a threshold of pain and what you've always done before is now coming out of you. You're overreacting in moments. Words start flying. Objects start flying. Veins are popping out and you're at a threshold of pain. And God is actually trying to do something in you. But instead of recognizing and embracing the moment, we resist and we continue to do what we've always done. Here's another, uh, here's another one that just kind of, it comes out of us. Bitterness. Um, bitterness is a driver in your life that will prohibit you from breaking through. Uh, the longer you hold on to the hurt, the more you're becoming bitter. And when bitterness takes root in your heart and in your life, you are destined to become stuck. It, you will hit the wall. Um, here, here's, here's another one. Um, judgmentalism. Is that a word? Judgmentalism. It's a word, it's a word today, everybody. Um, when judgmentalism is what's flowing out of your, your life, it could be that you're at a threshold of pain and you're just resisting what's required of you to get to break through, to get to the other side, which is usually, usually actually, and when that's flowing out of you, it's actually uh, an indicator that you have unresolved pain because you're mad at everyone else that's moving on. And, and they dealt with the hurt and they dealt with the pain and you're living in the wound. And I, can I just be honest? There are a lot of church going people whose previous hurt is holding them hostage and they're actually holding that church accountable for the hurt they never dealt with. I mean, they never really dealt with it and disappointment is always, uh, always met with, when you have an expectation and that expectation is unmet, you will find yourself disappointed. Now, you can be disappointed and not get stuck. Where you get stuck is when you don't deal with the disappointment and it becomes a wound. And you hold on to that and now you're judging everyone else and now you have a spirit of bitterness. And what, what type of person is a, is a judgmental person? It's a prideful person. So I just want to tell you, all of these things, they start coming out of your life and you start thinking to yourself, man, if everyone else would just start working on their stuff, life would be better. I mean, because there certainly wouldn't be anything that I, I mean, I'm good. Which is why when you find yourself hitting the wall, there are several things. Some of, some of you, you're standing at a threshold today and you're feel, you are filled with fear and worry and bitterness you know what worry is? Worry is believing that God won't get it right. But here's the deal. Bitterness is believing that God got it wrong. And some of us don't move because they're convinced God won't get it right. And some of us don't move because we're convinced God got it wrong. And when you get to that place, you will never break through. Here's, here, here's, another, here's another one. Unforgiveness. 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 Um, unforgiveness is a destiny killer. I mean, unforgiveness will hold you hostage because you become enslaved to what that person did. And you come to this threshold of pain and some of you have been stuck honestly for a long time and you know what you want and you actually know what you need to do. And you've been stuck for a long time, but you refuse to go through the pain that's required of releasing that person and releasing them to God. And 
Here's the last one. I'll write it up here uh, because a lot of that will just result in a lot of blaming. Um, have, you ever, have you ever met a person that has the gift of blaming? Um, <laughs> in other words, it's, it's always someone else's fault. I mean, what, what, what's that result in? Finger pointing? I mean, I, I did nothing. I mean, I certainly can't be held responsible for where my life has ended up. And never getting honest enough to acknowledge my role and how you've ended up where you've ended up. Well, if my boss keeping me down, not giving me a shot, well, if my spouse would just start, well, if you would just start and a person with a blaming spirit will always lead with excuses. And I just tell you, you, you can live your life trying to convince yourself and others that it was always someone else's fault. But listen, excuses and blaming will never get you to your destiny ever, ever. So all of these drivers, if you want to know if you're at a threshold of pain, you need to know what's coming out of your life. What's driving what's coming out of your life? Wherever we find ourselves today, we need to be honest enough to know this is my reality. This is how I got, we know what we want to become. And we, we know what God's calling us to. And now we need to figure out what's going to be required of us. And you see what, what a lot of us haven't figured out is that your breakthrough is on the other side of embracing pain. And most of us have spent our lives avoiding pain and we wonder why we're so weak. We wonder why we're no closer to our purpose. Here's the deal. You, you can never correct what you're unwilling to confront. And some of us have been unwilling to confront the reality of our lives. Um, Dr. Sam Chand in his book, Leadership Pain, he says it this way, you will grow only to the threshold of your pain. In other words, pain is part of progress. So if I avoid pain, I'm avoiding growth. And quite often, the difference between where I am and where God wants me to be is the pain I'm unwilling to endure. So I have this resistance to facing pain, my unwillingness to, to cross the threshold. And that becomes my greatest limitation. Let me say it this way. Your pain threshold will become your ceiling. And your unwillingness to deal with the pain will cap the ceiling on your life. And here's what you need to understand. The moment when you step across the threshold, do you, you know what it's called? Let me give you what the Bible calls it. It's called brokenness. The moment you step across the threshold is actually where brokenness begins. God brings us over and over and over again in life. We're progressing in our relationship. We're moving on the continuum of life. We hit a wall. We hit a threshold of pain. And the way we break through it is to embrace brokenness. We hit this. Let me change colors, everybody. So You, you come to this place. And you hit this, and the only way, the beginning of breaking through the threshold of pain is to embrace brokenness. Yes, it has two N's and two S's. What, what's the key to becoming more like Christ? What, what's the key to moving past the threshold of pain, it is always, listen to me, always, always, always embracing brokenness. Psalm 51, David writes, my sacrifice, O God, is a broken spirit. You see, it's a, it's a broken and a contrite heart. There's something attractive about our brokenness to God. 
and you keep trying, you keep hitting up along the threshold of pain, and you refuse to embrace brokenness. Okay, Devin, well, I get it. Well, what's, what's brokenness? You ready? Here's what brokenness is. Brokenness is any moment when you are confronted with the reality of who you truly are. Well, don't you hate that? That's a bummer. You want to break through this? You're going to have to get honest with who you really are. When we come face to face with who we really are, when you come face to face with who God is and who you are and where, where your gifting sit, and you kind of go, you know what? I'm actually not good enough. I'm not smart enough. I'm not gifted enough. I'm not charismatic enough. I'm not talented enough. I'm not capable enough. It's in that moment that we make the choice to embrace brokenness. And that is actually the beginning to your breakthrough. And any, any time we come to this place, these marking moments of our lives and we're faced with making the decision, I know what I want. I know what's better for me, I, but it's gonna hurt. Because it hurts to come to the table and lead with, I can't do it. But it's only in and through and by the strength and power and wisdom of God, which is gonna require you to humble yourself, to look in the mirror and say, this is who I truly am. David also wrote in Psalm 23, even though I walk through the darkest valley, it's coming. I'm, I'm not afraid. Why? Because he's with me. And that's the only way you're going to be able to walk through a threshold of pain. To recognize I can't do it. I need to take on a spirit of brokenness. I love this quote from Elizabeth Elliot. Look what she says. She said, I'm, I'm not a theologian or a scholar, but I am very aware of the fact that pain is necessary to all of us. Then she goes on to say this, watch this. In my own life, I think I can honestly say that it was out of my deepest pain that came the strongest conviction of the presence and love of God. So Paul talks about this in Romans chapter seven. And it's almost as if Paul is describing this threshold of pain. He describes these moments that we come to where we feel like we're hitting a wall. And he talks about these moments in Romans chapter seven. Look what he says in verse 21. He says, through my experience, and he had a lot of them, he discovered a principle. What's the principle? That even when I knew what was right, even when I knew that's, what, that's where I need to be moving, that evil was always trying to pull me back this way. Sabotaging me, he says. Look what he says, truly deep within my true identity. Look right here in my eyes. I believe that in everyone's true identity, they actually want to be moving this way on the continuum because you were created in the image of God. With my true identity, I love to do, this is what I want. This is what I really, really, really want. Well, tell me what you want, what you really, really want. I'll tell you what I want. What I really, really, I want to, I want to, I want to, I want, <laughs> I want. <laughs> yeah, it's in the Bible, everyone. It's in this. It's in. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, you're finally with me. That's all I had to do this morning. Okay. Look what he says. Look what he goes on to say in verse 23. But I discern, I discern there's something trying to pull me the other way. There's another power in my humanity. So in my body and soul, there's another power, but in my spirit, I wanna do this. And there's a war that's being waged against, look, look, against the moral consciences, the principles of my conscience. And he goes on to say, bringing me into captivity as a prisoner to the law of sin. This unwelcome intruder that's trying to distract my body and soul while my spirit, my spirit wants to go this way, my body and soul want to go this way. It's a war. When you, when you know what God's calling you to and you know what he's got waiting for you and yet you know what's required of you at the threshold. Of what he's, now watch, watch what he says now, verse 24. Oh, <laughs> Now, some of you are miserable today. And you've been miserable for a long time. 
And the reason you're miserable is because you don't want to embrace brokenness and you don't want to embrace the pain of what's required to break through. That's why I was so proud of those people yesterday because you know what they realized? Freedom doesn't come without a cost. It costs you something. Who will, look what he says. Who will free me from this life that is dominated by trying to pull you the other direction? What, look at this promise though, verse 25. Thanks be to God. Come on, say it out loud. These two words, who delivers me? Come on, say it like you believe it. Who delivers through and only through the person of Jesus Christ? It's the only way you're gonna get free. You've got to embrace brokenness. You've got to embrace humility. You've got to recognize what's driving your life, what's being externalized in your life. Is there anyone thankful for the delivering power that only comes through Jesus Christ this morning? We ultimately know this is what we want. So that's why this is so painful because we see this and we're standing here and we know now that we have to embrace brokenness. And so we know now where we are and we know where we want to go. I'm changing colors, everybody. So what's this going to require? It's the unknown, and I, I'm going to call this a season of brokenness. Now, the reason we don't like that is because we don't know what that looks like. We know what we want to become, and we know what God has for us, and we see the mountain on the other side, but what we don't know is how deep is the valley I got to go through to get to there. And now, because we know where we're at, we recognize it's not just going to happen overnight. Because in order to get through the threshold of pain, it's going to require a deep work of the Holy Spirit. It's going to require, listen, it's not just going to be an event. It's not just going to be a one-time deal. It's not just going to be a church service. If you're looking for everything to be accomplished here in the next 45 minutes and everything's fine and dandy and going to wake up tomorrow with no thought of all, all of this world because I had a wonderful zapping in the moment, you are fooled, my friend. Now, some of us prefer deliverance to the process. Can I just tell you? It's going to require a season Devin, you should be more positive. I'm positive. It's going to require a season. I mean, I'm just telling you. And for lack of a better word, it's, it's, it's a spiritual metamorphosis. Now, whenever we hear the word metamorphosis, ever since elementary school, there's only one illustration that every single person on the planet thinks, and it's the... the that's exactly right. I knew you were going to say that because I, I, I was planning ahead. So I was... <laughs> Now, that's actually a metamorphosis. Um, the caterpillar or, you know, a worm goes into a cocoon and he goes through a, a process because he, he knows that he's called to something greater, but he has to recognize that there are going to be some steps along the way to become more like Christ. Right, here's what I love about this. It's not just a better caterpillar. It's actually a completely different thing. <laughs> like, who wouldn't want to go from crawling on their belly to flying around? <laughs> it's waiting for you, but you have to go through this. Reminds me of 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Because if anyone is in Christ, they're not just a better person. They're a completely brand new creation in him. The old is gone and the new has come. It's going to require a process. And from caterpillar to butterfly, it doesn't happen in a moment. It doesn't happen in an instant. It's not just one prayer and it's not just one service. No, the Bible actually speaks of what this season looks like. I'm going to go to James chapter 4. And we see this reality. We see this continuum 
playing out. We know what we want to become, but we have this unknown of what this season of brokenness looks like. And it starts with humble yourselves. Okay. I, well, I really like flying around. I mean, I really like the feeling of that. I don't like the cocoon situation. Well, what do I have to do? You're going to start there. Humble yourself. Resist the devil. He will flee. Move this way on the continuum. Come close to God, and God will come close to you. Now, we love that. I want God close. It's what I want. This is, I, I know that's what I need, actually. But we would expect, okay, I come close to you. You come close to me. The rest of my life is rainbows and Skittles and uh, unicorns and cupcakes with extra frosting. I don't know what it is. Whatever. And everything in your life just... It's roses. Next verse. Watch. Wash your hands, you sinners. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Well, I, I mean, I like the flying around thing, but I don't really like the pain of what's required to break through my threshold. Wash your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. Grieve. This doesn't sound like rainbows and Skittles. Grieve mourn and wail. Change your laughter to mourning and your joy to gloom, goes on to say. Humble yourselves if you didn't get it the first time because you're not going to be able to do that unless you do that. But if you do that, <laughs> he takes you somewhere that you know you want to go. What? I know. Well, what? Well, I don't, I don't know if that's time out. James is telling us, you hit a threshold of pain and between where you know you are now and where you know you wanna go, there's a season where you embrace brokenness and now you're gonna submit yourself to the season, to the process of what that's going to require. Where'd I put my green marker at? There it is. So he, he, gives, us three, he gives us three words. He says, we're going to grieve we're going to mourn, and we're going to wail. The Christian word for grieve is this, conviction. I know, it's not a word you hear a lot of these days, but it's actually a role of the Holy Spirit in your life. You're standing on the mountaintop, and you see what your life could potentially be, but we can't see in our natural minds what that's gonna require of us. And we don't know the, the valley that we're gonna have to go through. And it's, it's led with the season of humility, which results then in conviction. And most of, us, most of us know what this feels like. It's when all of a sudden you respond the way that you know you're not supposed to respond. And it's just that, hey, what are you doing? <laughs> like you overreact. I know I'm the only one that does this. You overreact. And like seconds later, it's like, well, that was stupid. Or, or it's this thought, are you ever going to react differently? I mean, we go through a, a season where we have to humble ourselves and we have to adjust some things in our lives. He's, wash your hands, he says. Be cleansed. There are some things that need to change. You need the conviction of the Holy Spirit. But here's, here's the deal. Most Christians stop there. Well, I got your forgiveness. I got the streets of gold. I'm good. But it's actually not how you, you experience a metamorphosis. To become something completely different. What, he says, mourn, grieve, conviction, mourn. Here, here's the, the, the Christian word for this is confession. So let, let me say, conviction without confession will not get you to <laughs> where God wants to take you. Um, I mean, the Bible tells us that our own salvation is contingent upon a level of confession. Romans chapter 10, watch this. If you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you will be saved. Okay, confess, believe, saved. Now, here's the deal. Confession is actually a twofold process though. Because you know what James chapter 5 tells us? Watch this. Confess your sins, not to God. 
No, confess your sins to each other and pray and you will be healed. Okay, let me get this straight. Confess, believe, saved. Confess, pray, healed. Okay, which means God can save you from your sin. You can get saved by that confession, but you get healed from that confession. Which means you're going to have to start going to the place. You want breakthrough? A lot of us want breakthrough and we refuse relationship. We want breakthrough and we want to do it all by myself. It's just me and God. We're fighting against the world. Breakthrough's not there. It's just not. Breakthrough, does, it doesn't happen in isolation. Which is why I just want to... We have a, a short and condensed semester of groups and you won't break through, but you've never, t- you've never crossed over that threshold because you go, well, I just don't do the people thing. Well, guess what? You don't do the breakthrough thing then. You just don't. You'll stay stuck. You'll stay stuck. And you know what that'll lead to? Judgmentalism, blaming, excuse making, bitterness, pride. That's what's driving your life and you get stuck because you refuse to embrace the pain of what's required for your breakthrough. Conviction, wash your hands. Confession, purify your hearts. Wailing, this is what we call consecration. Conviction, confession, consecration. Where where does the metamorphosis happen? How am I able to come out completely different, completely new? What did he he say here? He said, uh, you're going to wash your hands, purify your hearts. What's he say here? You're double-minded. Okay. Um, If you want to break through to the place where you know God is calling you, it's going to require a different way of thinking. Because it's one thing to be convicted in a moment and it's another thing to confess in the moment. It's another thing to change the way you actually think, which doesn't happen in a moment. It's a season of brokenness. Part of the cocoon experience is this. You need a mindset change. This is why we fall back into unhealthy patterns and we actually start going to the thing we know we don't want. It's because... We're not singular in our thinking. We're dualistic in our thinking. We have two visions for our life. Do you know what two visions require? That's division. And you're divided. You have, another translation says you have a divided mind. You're divided in your thinking because you're not singular in your thinking. You won't get your breakthrough, which requires what we just looked at, other people in your life. you're probably not going to change your mindset just by yourself. It's part of the process. There's a work that has to happen in you. And then and only then will you live what the Bible calls a transformed life. You're transformed by the way that you think. And one of the best illustrations that I can think of is found in Acts chapter 9. And we're going to look at this process play out. And we're actually going to go back to the conversion of Saul to Paul. The guy that writes two-thirds of the New Testament. If you're not familiar with the story, he wasn't a great guy. Um, So much so that prior to the cocoon experience, he he had a different name. He was a totally different thing. And the Bible says that he was traveling around and he was persecuting Christians to the degree that he was overseeing the execution of many believers. The Bible says that he was breathing out murderous threats to the disciples and looking to imprison anyone that attached themselves to following Jesus. And look what it says in verse three of Acts chapter nine. And as he saw near Damascus, and here's where a lot of us are, we're on our journey. We're we're doing what we want to do. I'm on my journey. You're welcome to come along, God, but I got a pretty good plan. I'm on my journey. Saul was on his journey, and suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, I love this, watch. Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? One of the most silly questions in all of the Bible right here. 
Who are you, Lord? <laughs> Do you just see the humor in the Bible, everybody? I mean, and Jesus is patient as he always is. And I'm Jesus. I'm, I'm actually the one you're persecuting. He knocks him quite literally off of his high horse. Paul, Paul actually thinks he's headed in the right direction, but he's not. And he comes to this moment where Jesus encounters him, this power encounter. I love the fact that Jesus knew exactly what this guy needed. Because this is a bad dude. I mean, this, this is the guy that's murdering Christians. I mean, he, Jesus knew exactly what he needed in this moment. And I think it's interesting because the people in Saul's life, because what we read earlier in Romans chapter 7, okay, the Saul of Acts 9 is the Paul of Romans 7. Now, is that not just unbelievable? And people at Acts 9, Saul would look at his life and go, there's no way you could become the Paul of Romans 7. I mean, that's impossible. All of us, listen, all of us are on this continuum. You're on it. You got to get honest at where you're at. And you, listen, you might be, let's just celebrate this for a moment. You might be one of the 65 people that checked B last week on Easter weekend to begin a relationship with Jesus. I said 65 people, everybody. All of heaven rejoices over one person. Can we do better than that for 65 people who began a relationship? Wow. Man, it's just unbelievable. And, and then we had 17 people. Check C. Now, some of my most favorite people in the world because they see themselves on this continuum and they're kind of going, I don't know about this whole deal. And I just love the fact that they're just kind of kicking the tires around connect. And, and then we had one person check D and uh, just know, just know that I'm so honored to be walking with you, that, that we as a church are thrilled to be on this journey with you. And I, maybe I should just introduce myself. Uh, hi, my name is Devin and I'm your spiritual tour guide. Welcome to the journey. And we're just honored to be on it with you. And maybe you're like, the people that would be looking at the Saul of Acts 9 and you'd never believe that he could become the Paul of Romans 7 and there's no way that he could become more like Christ. And then all of a sudden, boom, conviction. Uh-oh, season of brokenness. And Jesus knew him well enough that he knew how he needed to talk to him. Verse six, watch what he says. Get up. <laughs> That's just how I read it. I think we always are imagining Jesus like, Get up, my friend, and get up and go to the city, and you're going to be told what you're going to do. Now, some of us need Jesus to talk to us like that. All right. Hey, get up and do what I'm telling you to do. I love this because Jesus knew Saul needed a power encounter, and this encounter, though, listen, listen, the encounter was just the beginning of the process, though. And then here's what he says in verse seven. Here's what you got. And the men traveling with Saul stood there speechless. Oh my goodness. And they heard the sound, but didn't see anyone. So just imagine, they hear something, they see Saul fall on the ground and having a conversation with no one they see. And then Saul gets up from the ground because Jesus told him, get up. And when he opened his eyes, he was blind. Now the, imagine you're his friend. What in the world? Goes on to say this, watch, watch. So they led him by the hand because he's got to tell them what he has to do now. And for three, well, I wish it was just in a moment. Couldn't the friends just gather around, say some nice little promises and wow, okay, we're on to the next thing. No, actually it's a, se it's a season. Conviction, confession, consecration. Three days was blind and <laughs> he doesn't eat or drink anything for three days. Someone that doesn't even love Jesus is now fasting, everybody. I mean, it's... Saul has this revelation, knocked off his high horse. Guys traveling with him don't see it. And how many know there isn't much to talk about for the next three days other than what's just happened? Can't see, no appetite. Can you just, how many times did Saul go, you guys wouldn't believe it? And they're like, oh my gosh, here it goes again. He'll tell this whole story all over again. 
Conviction. Con- which, what's, what's he doing? He's confessing now. He's bringing other people into the process. He's telling them what God's doing in his life. And he's realizing, You're, I need some other people to take me by the hand and lead me to the place that's actually get me to my breakthrough. I mean, this man that had functioned from this place of power and authority is taken to his knees. Okay, let me just say this. Be careful who you allow to lead you during a season of brokenness. I just be very careful. The reality is this, to, to get from there to there, it's gonna require some people to take you by the hand. You're gonna need some counsel. And, and while they're with him and while he keeps retelling the story, God's actually speaking to another na- man by the name of Ananias. And he tells Ananias that I, I'm gonna point you to go, go pray for Saul. And he, I've actually given Saul a vision that you're gonna show up and place your hands on him and pray over him. And, and Ananias knew Saul and he was like, there's gotta be someone else that you could, uh, I'm a Christian. You're asking me to go see Saul. I mean, just imagine. I mean, this is, he's been killing Christians. And look what it says in verse 15. But the Lord said to Ananias, go. This man is my chosen instrument. What? To proclaim my name to the Gentiles and their kings and the people of Israel. I will show him how much he must suffer. It's just the beginning for Saul. Now he goes on to say this, look. And then Ananias he goes to the house. He enters it, placing his hands on Saul. He says, Brother Saul, please don't kill me. But the Lord, Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here, watch this. He sent me to you so that you could, you could keep moving in the process. So that you could see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately something like scales fell from his eyes and he could see again. Um, I think it's not just that he could see again, but he could see differently. He actually never saw the same way again. And then look, watch, same, same phrase, watch verse 19. And he got up. Different getting up this time though. It's not, it's not I, I, now, now he's at a different place. Conviction, confession, He's getting up and going, oh my goodness. Now he got up, was baptized, and after eating something, he regained his strength. Um, Do you see the valley? Do you see the season between the threshold of pain where I know I wanna be, where I know my purpose awaits me, where I I know it's a more spirit-led, spirit-empowered life, and yet I've got the valley in between the two that I have to be willing to embrace a season of brokenness. He's cruising along. You know what a season of brokenness will do? It will change the way you see. Some of us need that. And fortunately, unfortunately, it's the very thing that we have to go through to see differently. To become something completely different than we were before. To the degree that people will look at your life and go, there's no way that was that. There's no way that thing flying around was that thing crawling around. Because if we don't step across the threshold of pain, if we don't, if we don't make the choice to to take the step to embrace the pain, what happens is we will actually start going the other direction. Because we realize if I don't do this, there's no further for me to go. This is my ceiling. You will only grow to the degree that you're willing to embrace pain. And if you're not growing, you're going the other direction. To the degree that at some point, you will then, what what I'm, I'm going to call a doom loop. Okay. Uh, everyone got your, your, your line, fill in your lines, everybody. All you OCD people, fill in your lines. That's your doom loop. And... And now pride starts to set in and fear starts to set in and bitterness starts to set in. And But here's the deal. Here, here's the thing that we have to understand. Even, even when we're going back this way, we're taking with us what we, were, what we were gaining when we were going that way. I was gaining some things while I was going that way and I still have those things while I'm going this way. 
So I now have, I've got, I've got some knowledge now. I mean, I've got some experience now. I mean, I've developed some skills now. I got skills. I've actually, when I was going this way, I actually, I had some influence. But, but because I chose to not embrace the pain of what's required of me to grow, I've decided I'm gonna go the other direction, but I'm gonna take the very thing that was imparted to me when I was going the right direction. And here's the danger. We can become deceived and we can actually become a hindrance to the cause of Christ. Because all of the things that we were gaining when we were headed towards our purpose, becoming more like Christ, now we're using it in the wrong direction and we're using the good things for the wrong things. And so much damage, listen to me, so much damage has been within the body of Christ to those who are headed in the wrong direction, using what they gained while they got in the right direction. Is it possible that this is what the world is watching us do? Is it possible that your testimony is being damaged because you refuse to embrace the pain that actually breaks you through to what God's calling you to? And they watch you turn around and go in the wrong direction. But here's the thing. We're good Christians. We know, it. we know, it. Oh, oh, oh my goodness, I'm so sorry, Jesus. I'm, oh, oh my goodness, what happened? Oh my goodness, I need to get back in church. Oh my goodness, I love this. Oh, and here. Is it possible that this is what the world is watching us do? And the reason we're so weak is because we refuse to embrace pain. Second Timothy chapter three, now watch, we're closing now. But mark this. There will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves. Watch this list now. Lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, holy, verse three, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. How's that for a list? Does that not sound like the world we're living in, everyone? Okay, now let me ask you a question. Who is, who is now the butterfly Paul wrote this, by the way. Who's the butterfly writing this about? Oh, well, those people out there, they don't know any better. Well, I, I don't know, because the next verse would actually say otherwise, because he's talking about a group of people that would refuse to embrace brokenness, refuse to embrace humility. They keep turning around, creating the doom loop. And look what he says in verse five, having a form of, of godliness, but having no power. You know what we have? You know what we have here? We have a form of godliness. Because we're using all the things that we gained while we were heading in the right direction, and we're using them for the bad. And we have a it looks for someone that has no discerning of spirit, it looks right. It's a form of something, but the Bible says it has no power. And a lot of us, because we refuse to embrace the pain, we have no power. And it's in that moment that we got to get honest enough to embrace brokenness. And it comes down to a choice. Hey, friends. You can't blame your life on other people's decisions. I'm trying to help you this morning. You're at a threshold of pain. And the goal of this continuum, because we think independence is what we want, but it's actually found on this end of the spectrum, on this end of the continuum. It's going to require Dependence. Dependence. I'm dependent upon someone greater than me. My independence has a form of godliness, but it has no power. 
My dependence is led by the Spirit. It's filled with the Spirit. It's empowered by the Spirit. And it's full of the fruit of the Spirit, which means I'm walking in purpose. But it's my dependence that produces that. My independence, it produces a form of something, but it has no power. So, let me tell you what the butterfly wrote to us in Galatians chapter 2. And this is our last verse for the day. He said, um, I've... I, I've chosen to embrace pain for the rest of my life. What? what? Yeah, I'm going to be crucified with Christ every day. I'm going to take up my cross every day because it's, no, it's not about me, everybody, but it's about Christ who lives in me. So I live in this earthly body by... <laughs> you know why we don't do this? We don't want to trust anyone else other than ourselves. But I have to trust in the Son of God who loved me and he gave himself up for me. Here's the choice. Will you choose to embrace brokenness? Will you choose to humble yourself? And will you choose to use what's been imparted and invested in you to head in the right direction? Hey, what's your, what's, what's your threshold of pain? What threshold are you, you standing at right now that you have to make the choice to cross over? And how, how long have you been standing there? How long have you been stuck there? What, what's being externalized in your life right now? What are you consistently seeing? What are your friends telling you that they consistently see? What, what's your next step? What's, what's God calling you to? Some of you need to go to step four today. And... and and stop like observing and start serving. <laughs> Says someone who serves. Some, some of you need to lead a connect group this summer. I know, but that means, I, that, that, I know. You have to willingly embrace the pain of opening your life up to some people. And some of us have pride and fear and control issues and insecurities and I could never do it like them and the enemy comes and he speaks lies over us and you have bitterness you've held, you've held on to the hurt and anger is coming out of you and you find yourself pointing your finger and being judgmental and blaming your life on the decisions of others and you just refuse to forgive that person you refuse to release them to God and move on Easier said than done, Dev. I know. That's why it's called a threshold of pain. But you will only grow to the threshold of the pain that you're willing to embrace. Listen to me. Your breakthrough is in your brokenness, friend. And come on, let's just bow our heads and think about that. You're standing at a threshold today. and In fact, if you were really honest, you'd say, I've been standing at the threshold for a long time, Devin. And I've been unwilling to embrace brokenness. I've been unwilling to embrace the pain required. I've been unwilling to trust God in the season of the unknown. Let me just say for those of you that you, you've never even experienced the, con the conviction or the confession part of the process. And I want to give you the opportunity to do that. But I also want to talk to my friends who have experienced that, but you just, you haven't embraced the, the new mindset that only happens in the metamorphosis process. And you're here this morning and you're, you're at a crossroads. You're at a threshold and you know what God would want for you. You actually even know what you would want because you know what you need. And yet you're, you're now today, you know what it requires of you. And you're looking at yourself. You, you have a, a real <laughs> clear picture. You're embracing brokenness and you're seeing yourself for who you truly are. And you're recognizing that I can't do this on my own. Listen, it's a free gift. God is offering you a free gift today. His son died 
so that you could walk through this season. You're walking through a valley and he's with you. And he said, Devin, I want to surrender my life. I want to submit my life. And I want to embrace whatever awaits me as I trust him in the middle of it. And I want to, I'm going to respond to the conviction of the Holy Spirit and I'm going to confess today that he's Lord. And if that's you this morning, would you just raise your hand and say, I, I, want, I want to do that. Yes, thank you. God bless you. Yes, thank you. Yes, thank you. Yes, thank you. God bless you. Yes, yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Wow. Wow. And it's so simple. It's so simple. And you, confession is just honesty. And it's to say, God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I've, I've refused to trust you. But I'm so thankful for what your son did for me. And dying for me. Bringing salvation to me. And today, I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart that God raised you from the dead, that you were buried in a tomb and we celebrated it last week and you rose victoriously and I now live with the same power that raised him from the dead. And we confess that today. And so Lord, I pray that you'd hear the confession of your people. And for those today, Lord, that are saved and they've given their lives to you, God, and they're standing at the threshold of pain and they're, they're recognizing you're calling them to something else, we all together, come on, let's stand right here. Let's all respond to that. Take a step today. Hope is found. Fear bows. Chains are broken when you make the choice to step through the threshold of pain. He changes it all. Come on, sing it. Chains. As you step through, as you embrace the pain, as you embrace brokenness, as you humble yourself and step through the threshold of pain. Come on. Live. Come on. Yeah, there's healing here today. There's hope in the name of Jesus today. Thank you, God, for the work that you're doing among us today. Oh, Jesus, you change everything. And change for oh, Lord, we bless your name. Fear. We all you God in every way. Do your work among us. Here and now. And Jesus, you change everything.